Hi, I'm delighted. And today I want to talk about the top 10 reasons why I think a certain spot on this board is a correct choice as first position. Now before I start, I want you the viewer to pause the video and choose where you would go as the first position. Go ahead and pause right now. So, I think the 9510 is a correct pick on this board as first position. And the first reason for that is the highest producing spot on this board. In the first position, everyone else is going to place their settlements, and your last spot will usually not be very high producing. So, in general, you want to have a very high producing spot. If we look around the board, the 9510 has 11 points of production. If you're having trouble narrowing down the best spot is, try to find the highest producing spots. In this case, it's a tie. There's a 9510. There's a 6511, there's a 369, and there's an 8410. Reason number two. It's the strongest producing ore spot on this board. It is critical to have strong ore wheat to win the game because those lead to cities and cities lead to increased production. You always want to get the ores because only a few players can get them. And in this case, the 9510 is the best producing ore spot. Reason number three. Break and ore only has three tiles instead of four, therefore making it a lot rarer and harder to get. It's important to get the rare resources because if you don't get the rare resources now, the other players will take them and you will not get it when it comes back to you. Reason number four, good ore tiles by the coast are better than the ore tiles in the center of the board. When you're a high ore player, it's hard to have good road bidding and you don't want to get trapped in the middle of the board. But therefore, by having a coastal ore, it gives you two options to expand if you point towards the coast. In this case, you could potentially get to the 10 brick 3-1 port or you can potentially build on the 9 ore. Although those spots aren't high producing, it gives you a spot to build which is critical for the heavy ore player. A common trap for heavy ore players is to take the center ore and then take a center wheat sheep. In this case, if someone took the 5, 6, 11 and the 9, 10, 11, then they're going to be trapped in the center of the board without much expansion space, even if they have a strong ore wheat sheep setup. This is a quick way for you to lose the game by running out of expansion spots as an ore wheat sheep player. And not only do you run out of expansion spots, you also lose out on the port. So you want to be by the coast so you can safely expand and not have to worry about people messing and taking away your settlement spots. Reason number five, this spot allows player two to lock players three and four out of good ore production. So player two sees, oh wow, a lot of the ore was just taken up on this board. I better get some myself before the ore is taken. So let's examine the three strong ore spots. There's a five, six, 12, there's the 5611 and the 4511. The 4511 doesn't really make sense because the 5611 is just better producing. So we're down between the 5611 and the 5612. So notice how I didn't place a road down for the 9510. This is because first position can point their road towards the wood port. By pointing your road to the wood port, it discourages the 5612 placement. The reason why player 2 would go on the 5612 is to go to the wood port. But if player 1 is already pointing his road to the wood port, then it causes an uncomfortable race for player 2. So you can point your road to the wood port, discouraging the 5612 placement and encouraging the 5611 placement. And the reason why this is important is because now you lock player 3 and 4 out of ore. Now you only have one player to worry about when fighting for largest army. As player 1, you want to lock other people out of ore because you want less people to race you for largest army because that is the easier win condition to get and to win games with. Reason number six, it is better to share a good ore tile with the player behind you so they can't block it. Now, player two has an advantage on player one because if player one plays a knight card on player two, player two can immediately move the knight right back onto player one. Player two has a positioning on player one, but in this case, player two cannot block player one's five ore. This is critical as you need ore to upgrade to cities and to buy knight cards. The reason why we want this is because whenever player 2 rolls a 7 or has a knight, they can't block the 5 ore because they're blocking themselves. So if they block the 9 ore, you still have the 5 ore open, so you're always going to have an ore open. Players 3 and 4 won't be having very many knight cards, since they won't have access to strong ore. So this is why the 5 ore is a good shared ore. It's very protected, second player is not going to block their own 5 ore spot, and you aren't going to block it either. It's very well protected by knights. Reason number seven, it's better to have short expansions as a heavy ore player. As I mentioned earlier, as a heavy ore player, you usually don't have strong road resources. So you want short expansion spots to cover up for that. By placing on the 9510 and pointing towards the coast, 
This allows you to have two potential settlement spots, the 9 ore and then the 10 brick. But second player who goes on the 6, 5, 11, they might have a problem with expanding. If they get cut off, they might be forced to build two roads and then a settlement without strong road resources. Reason number eight, we want to have a few options for ports. In this case, the 5, 9, 10 can lead to the 3, 1 port on the brick, or it can lead to the wood port on the 9, 12. As you can see, the second player, if they go on the 6, 5, 11, they might have trouble getting a port if they don't choose a coastal spot. Ports are critical to winning the game because as you progress further, your opponents will be less likely to trade with you. So you'll be having to trade with the bank and ports allow you to get a cheaper trade with the bank. Although the situation isn't super ideal, but you like to have a port on the 9 ore since it's less contested, the 9, 5, 10 is still a strong option because you can go to the 3, 1 port or you can go to the wood port. You still have two options and if you get a road bidding, you can potentially get to both ports. Reason number nine, there are many other spots on this board with the complementary resources we need. Let's take a look at this board. The whole section on the right side are pairings of wheat sheep. We have the 5102, the 1092, the 692, the 693, the 843, the 91011, even the coastal spots, the 83, the 63, the 105. So just by going by the odds, we know that there's a strong chance that we can get a wheat sheep spot as our second pick. So we can play a strong or wheat sheep development card game. And a lot of the old strategy guides I've read before, they all emphasize try and get all five resources. While I think resource diversification is important, I think getting all five resources is highly overrated. Getting all five resources is nice, but getting the strong or wheat sheep is even more important. In addition, if you somehow get locked out of wheat and sheep on this board, you can still go for the strong wood spots. Since there's a wood port at the 912, you could make the decision to take the strong wood and go for the wood port instead. However, this is not the option that I choose. I prefer the strong wheat sheep if possible. I'd say in general as first position, if there's a lot of pairings of one resource, you can sort of anticipate that being your last pick because not everyone's going to want that. There's so many wheat sheep spots on this board that there's a chance that not all players will take it. Reason number 10, the last reason and also the most important reason. We would not want an opponent to have the spot they will have an even better spot to go with it. So if I was looking and analyzing this board and I was looking for a reason to t not take the 5, 9, 10, well, the player behind me will get the 5, 9, 10 and they'll get the better complementary spot that goes with it. This is bad for two reasons. The first reason being they're going to have an even stronger or wheat sheep setup, which is hard to stop. And the second reason being the strong or wheat sheep player is directly after you. The reason why this is bad is because once again, once you end your turn as player 1, player 2 can immediately play a knight card, blocking you for the majority of the orbit. This can severely destroy your game and hinder your production, which is what you want to avoid. I don't like going on the 4, 5, 10, given that a player could go on the 9, 10, or a player could go on the 3, 4, 8 and cut you off to the 8, 10, and the fact that you don't get 2 or spots. In summary, whatever you're placing, you have to think about what other people are going to get if you can see the strong spot. It's very easy to talk yourself into taking a weird and unconventional spot, but at the end of the day, you have to realize what you concede to your opponents. So for all those reasons, I think the 5, 9, 10 is the correct decision as first position. At the very end of the day, you might not get the best complimentary spot with the 9, 5, 10. However, for those 10 reasons, I think the 9, 5, 10 is the correct play as first position. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite reason was and what you learned from this video. Thank you. And as always, I'm delighted and I hope you learned something.